Good morning. Welcome to First Baptist Church. You have a great day of worship and prayer as well as deacon ordination. We're glad you're here today and here are a few announcements for you. All families with children, babies to fifth grade are invited to join us immediately after the service today for a picnic in the new playground or picnic area. Tonight at 4.30 p.m. we have Zip Kids, Choir and Bible and Activities, Ladies and Men's Bible Studies. Youth will leave tonight at 4 p.m. for the one night event, Bring Money for Dinner. Um, nominee committee meets at 6 p.m. Men's Fellowship will meet tomorrow at 6 p.m. at Mr. Howard's Cabin. If you are interested in the Revival Conference Sunday, January 9th through Sunday, January 16th, there will be an interest meeting on October 3rd at 3.30 p.m. For all other announcements, please check your bulletin. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for just letting us come together and be able to worship you freely and not have to worry about prosecution. I want to thank you for everybody that's in here, and I want to be able to open our hearts for this service today. I want to pray that everybody stays safe as we go throughout our week. Amen. And a very good morning to you. Welcome to the service. Will you stand as we sing together, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission all is at rest i in my savior am happy and blessed watching and waiting looking above filled with his goodness lost in his love this is my story this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. He is my rock, my shield, my force. He's my salvation and my strength. The courts of death, they were surrounding me. But he heard my cry for help. He is my refuge, my high tower. He's my deliverer, so strong. The courts of death. You may be seated. I want you to pay attention to our video screen for just a moment.
the way all this started for Ebenezer was that we were trying to start a neighboring ministry here at Ebenezer. Grants had been provided by the Janie Chapman offering for churches that were going to do these things. So we applied for and were accepted. And right after all of that came into play, COVID hit, everything around here shut down. And so we had a real issue as to how would we do this because we still wanted to use the money to make an impact for the kingdom somehow. We were trying to figure out a way to reach people that were not coming through the doors, um, trying to figure out how to grow the kingdom. And we wanted to reach people of all ages. So we thought, let's build something around Mother's Day. So a few of us put our heads together, myself, Rachel Garrett, Greg Hamlin, David Wyke, our senior pastor, and we decided that maybe we could give flowers to not only our church members, um, but also open it up to the community. I took two boxes to our neighborhood, and on Mother's Day, my daughter and I went around the neighborhood, wished everyone we came across a happy Mother's Day, you know, and tried to, to spread the word, let them know that they were loved and they were welcome here anytime as soon as our doors opened or online however they felt comfortable worshiping we would love to have them without having that contact that face-to-face -face contact with someone or being able to just hug somebody I do believe that it opened an avenue for us to be more neighborly and to be more loving um, to our neighbors there were two things that of course stood out which were the commands that Jesus gave us, which is to love your neighbor as yourself and to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength. And so it just became clear and evident that in this community in Florence, South Carolina, where we sit, there are so many households and so many opportunities to share Jesus with our neighbors. We need to be intentional with the time we do have to be able to share with urgency the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the month for Janie Chapman State Missions Offering, and you may have recognized Ebenezer Baptist Church in Florence. Pastor David Wyke's a really good friend of mine. Dave and I hang out every, from time to time. I love that brother dearly. Um, so in your uh, pews, there should be an, uh, an envelope. If you haven't given yet, we're taking this offering through the end of the month towards state missions. Also last week, we had a special prayer guide that we introduced. It, we still have many of them left in the, the lobby out in front of the office. We may have some back there, so I encourage you to get one of these prayer bulletins, read the stories, and pray over uh, these specific men or ministries, how the Lord is working through them. We've been taking a time during our service to have special prayer emphasis every Sunday, and I thought it would be appropriate for us to have a, a special moment to pray over our impact youth. And so I'm going to ask all my impact youth, y'all come on down. All my impact youth, y'all come on down here. And I'm going to invite any of y'all here, if i got any teachers, if i got any coaches, anybody that feels led to just come and you want to place a hand on one of our youth, you want to pray over them, I'm going to be down there with them. And I'm going to ask uh, their, their fearless leader, Tam, to have a prayer this morning over them. But I'll encourage any of my parents, any of my, my, my adults, if you care about our youth, you, you want to come down and just, just, just pray with them down here? Come on, I'm going to get some of my adults down here. Come on, come on, come on, adults. Come on, there you go. Come on. Y'all come on down. If you care about our youth, I want you to come on down. Place, maybe place a hand. Maybe just to let them know how, how important they are. We need to be praying for our young people. We need them to be the faith champions of tomorrow. We need, we need them to be the spiritual champions of tomorrow. Amen? Amen. So y'all come on down. Tam, why don't you say a prayer over our youth this morning, all right? I don't know about fearless. Many days I'm fearful, but I have the Lord in my heart. So, um... I did want to mention before I pray for them, um, we started an adopt a student program a couple weeks ago, and um, all the ones that I had at the time were adopted, but I do have two kids that are up for adoption. Um, if anybody is interested, um, you can see me after the service today um, to get them adopted. They don't want to be orphans anymore, so I told them they're in foster care so far. Um, <laughs> But uh, if you're interested, we are still asking for someone to take them on and pray for them and encourage them over this next school year. Um, but if you would just join your hearts in prayer, um, I'm just going to, I'm kind of going to do it kind of like we do the prayer triangles um, and kind of pray three different ways over them. 
Um, and the first way is if you would just take a moment to pray just for their health and safety um, as they grow up and as they're out and about and in their schools, um, I just ask that you would pray for that first. Lord, we pray for each student here and the ones that aren't here with us today. Lord, we just ask that you would help to put a hedge of protection around them. Keep them healthy um, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. Um, Lord, we also pray for their safety. Um, in the world that we live in today, there's so, so much uncertainty and just evil and violence. And we just pray a hedge of protection over them that as they go about, that they would walk with the boldness and confidence of Christ, but that you would protect them, um, give them wisdom and discernment in the places that they go. And um, we, just, we just pray that over their lives right now in Jesus' name. The next way I would pray for, or ask you to pray for them is that they would just have a deepened faith, that they would grow um, deep in God's word and in their relationship with him. And if you would just pray over that right now. Jesus, we pray that your word would sustain them, that they would have a hunger for it, they would have a desire for it, and they would fall more in love with you because they are digging into your word. Help me as their leader to be faithful, to keep pointing them to that. But Lord, that they would have that desire on their own, that they would plant your word in their heart, it would be a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their path. Lord, we just pray that their faith would be deepened over the next year um, as they continue to walk and grow in you. And we just pray that you would receive the glory for um, that relationship, but draw them near to their hearts in Jesus' name. And lastly, I'd ask that you would just um, pray over them a heart that's compassionate and has an urgency to share their faith. So if you would pray for a compassionate heart and an urgency to share their faith. Lord, I pray for these students that you would continue to build a compassionate spirit in them, that you would um, allow them to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs around them. But Lord, more importantly, that they would have an urgency, a sense in their heart that they have to get the good news of the gospel to their friends and their loved ones and their family and even the people they don't know in their schools. That they would be bold and confident to share the the um, good news of the gospel and Lord I pray that um, they would just they would just see that there's a need for people to be rescued and you are the rescuer and so we lean into that and I just pray that over their hearts today that you would continue to to fill them to fuel them and to guide them and we love you and praise you in Jesus name amen learned to trust in Jesus and I've learned to trust in God and learned to trust in his word. Will you stand together as we sing through it all?
trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. In times like these, I have a Savior. In times like these, I have an anchor, I'm very sure, I'm very sure, my anchor holds and grips the solid rock, this rock is Jesus, yes he's the one, this rock is Jesus, the with me please father we just thank you so much for this time in the service where we have an opportunity just to give back a small portion of what you have blessed us with and father you take care of the flowers of the field you clothe them and take care of the birds of the air how much more so do you take care of us so we cheerfully give back just a portion today to you and know that you will use it for your glory and we thank you in jesus name Stands an endless mercy tree, every broken, weary soul, find your rest and be made whole. Stripes of blood that stain its frame, shed 
Stands an endless mercy tree. If you have your Bibles, open up to John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I'm not going to sing now, right? Have I heard enough singing? All right, John chapter 3. Last Sunday, we started a new men's series in the evenings called No More Excuses. It's a Tony Evans study. Men, by the way, there's still room just because you didn't make it to the first one. You come and join us tonight. But as, as we were talking about 
our pasts and the excuses that men often make about their past, we, we discuss this question. What's an event in your past that you often think about? An event in your past that you often think about. And for me, there's many events in my past that I often think about. But there's two particular events that I think about quite often. One happened on May 29th, 2009. Another happened on September 27th, 2010. And of course, those are the, the two days that my children were born. It's a big day when somebody's born. It's a big event. It's a big, important occurrence because that's the day when someone enters into this world in life. Now, we know that life begins in the womb. We know that. We stand upon life in the womb. God has created and ordained every life. But when someone is born, we celebrate that. That's why we have birthdays. And we continue to celebrate birthdays throughout the years. But Jesus spoke about being born again. There's a need to be born again. And it's important that we understand the Spirit's role in being born again. Now, we started a new series last week, Come Holy Spirit, where we are, are learning and looking in God's Word about the person of Holy Spirit. And in order for us to live the life God has called us to be, that unexplainable life, Man, the Holy Spirit's got to be living in, around, and through us. But, and we'll be walking through, we'll learn about what it means to be filled by the Spirit, to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, how we grieve the Holy Spirit, how we quench the Holy Spirit. We'll be talking about that. But before we have any more discussions and conversations, we need to first make sure that we are born again. We need to make sure that we have Holy Spirit living in us, a birth from above. And so I want to read God's Word, John chapter 3, a very simple message this morning before we go into our, our ordination time. But John chapter 3, if you have your own Bible, you want to listen along, you want to look in your own translation, I'm in the New American Standard. Hear the Word of God, John chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, uh, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, Well, how can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. Verse 8, last verse in our passage. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Would you pray with me? Father, this is your word. What a joy it is to preach your word. And apart from you, I can do nothing. And so I pray for an outpouring of Holy Spirit upon this time in your word, upon my sharing your word in the preaching of your word, our hearts and our eyes to be hearing and seeing and the work you want to do in our lives this day speak through your word empowered by holy spirit we pray this in jesus name amen nicodemus was a very important man the bible tells us that he was ruler of the jews a man of the pharisees he was a a spiritual teacher a very very smart intelligent man he probably had much deep education in god's word and the law and so knowing this very intelligent man, he comes to Jesus by night. Now, why he came by night, there's many speculations. Some say that he came because he didn't want to be seen by, by others. You know, he was, he was a very important religious leader, and this Jesus was kind of a rebel. So some speculate maybe he didn't want to be seen. It's also been speculated that this is symbolism of spiritual darkness that Nicodemus was in. It's also been speculated that he came at night because that was the only time that he could have a one-on-one -on -one 
uninterrupted conversation with Jesus. We know when he studied the scriptures, Jesus is always getting bothered. He's always having people come and, 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 and talk to him. And so it's possible that he wanted to find that uninterrupted time with the Lord, and it was at night. But what we do know is that he, he lets Jesus know. He says, Jesus, rabbi, teacher, you do things that no one else can do. He says, man, we know you come from God. There is something different about what you can do, that, that no one can do these things unless God's with him. And so Jesus has, gives us this opportunity to teach Nicodemus about the spiritual truth about being born again. And this morning in God's word, very simple, I want to share three spiritual truths about being born again, about the Spirit's role. Because again, if we're talking about Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come and live and move in our lives through our church and our world today. We need to first make sure we understand Spirit's role in our salvation. We can't be filled with the Spirit. We can't go any further unless He is truly in us, and that comes by being born again. So what's God's Word teach us this morning? Three spiritual truths about being born again. Number one, I want you to notice first that there is an exception for being born again. There is an exception for being born again. Now verse 3, this is what I want to point you to, verse 3. Jesus answered and said to him, now remember Nicodemus has come by night, this very important man, very intelligent man, you know, Lord, nobody can do the things that you do, Jesus. Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, unless. Now, my King Jamesers out there, you know, it uses the word accept, right? Unless. That word unless means that unless one action happens, the other action's not going to happen, right? Unless I turn on the water in the morning, I'm not going to have water for a shower. I'm not going to have water to wash my hands. Unless I fill my car up with gas, it's not going to run. Unless I fill my, my lawnmower up with gas, it's not going to run. In other words, I buy a lawnmower, it ain't going to run. Something's got to happen, right? I've got to fill it with gas. In the same way, he's saying, look, no one can see the kingdom of God. No one can except something happens. Something has to happen for that to happen. Now, again, he's, anyone can see the kingdom of God. What's the kingdom of God? Of course, we always think about being in heaven with, with God together. The kingdom of God is pr simply God is king, Jesus, king of kings, ruling in hearts, minds, and souls. Part of the kingdom is now. Part of it's going to be in the future. And so what happens is when we respond to the gospel, and I'll unpack this a little bit later on. We all know, you hear me share it every single Sunday morning, the good news, we are sinners separated because of our sins. God sent Jesus to suffer, die, and rise again for the forgiveness of our sins. And when we trust Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we repent of our sins, we ask for forgiveness and turn from our sins and turn to Jesus. We're born again. And at that moment, Holy Spirit starts taking heart charge of our hearts, our minds, our thoughts. We become Jesus. We become all to the King of Kings. Jesus you're, you're my ruler. You're everything. And so through his kingdom, he has control over me, and I share the gospel, and somebody else gets saved. And through our actions, through what we do, his kingdom starts being influenced and starts ruling through us. But he says that nobody can even see this. Nobody can even get it unless, except they are born again. That word again means from above. It's a spiritual birth from above. No one can see the kingdom of God, can get the kingdom of God, unless they are born again from above. It's a supernatural birth from above. So number one, notice there is an exception for being born again. It ain't going to happen. You're not going to see the kingdom of God unless except you're born again. But number two, I want you to also notice that there is an element to being born again. There is a crucial element to be born again. Verses 4 to 7 now. Verse 4, Nicodemus then says, How can a man be born when he's old? He cannot enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born, can he? Very smart, intelligent man. Again, he's brilliant. This man has studied the law. I mean, he, he knows the law. Good question. He knows better. Jesus, how can somebody be born again? Verse 5, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, verily, verily, I say to you, unless, there's the word again, unless except 
one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. When he uses that word, unless, except, born of what? Of water and spirit. Let me talk about the water first. A wrong translation, a wrong interpretation. Some people might look at that and say, well, that means you need to be baptized to be saved. That's not what it means. And no, that's, that you don't have to be baptized to be saved. You get saved, and in obedience, you walk and you, go, you get baptized after that. The water here is represented a spiritual cleansing, a forgiveness. You go back to the Old Testament, water is always used as a spiritual cleansing. So what the water stands for is when we ask for forgiveness, and God, God cleanses us from our sins. Lord, forgive me for my sins, and he cleanses us with that water. But then notice that, that next element there. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that tells you and I that everybody's automatically kept out of God's kingdom. Nobody's going into God's kingdom except, unless this happens, what has to happen? Born of water and Spirit. Cleansed, ask for forgiveness, Spirit, birth in them. That's the element. Listen to Ezekiel. Chapter 36, verses 25 to 27. Here's Lord God. This helps us understand what Jesus is saying here. Ezekiel 36, verse 25. The Lord God says, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your uncleansness, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. See, that's, that's the water there, all right? Cleansed. Verse 26. And I will give you a new heart. And a new spirit I will put within you, and I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Verse 27. Pay attention here now. Verse 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. You see what Jesus is saying here? You're born of water. You're cleansed. You ask for forgiveness. He cleanses with that forgiveness. And he puts spirit. There's the element there. You've got to have Holy Spirit. Look what he says. I'll put my spirit within you and you'll walk in my statutes, careful to obey my rules. That's the kingdom of God ruling us. And the only way that I can obey God's word is Holy Spirit within me. Man, to live, to, to obey him. That's the, the element there. We often think that God is after a clean outside. And see, the Pharisees were all about the outside, man. They had to wear the nice robes. They had to do the spiritual routines and riches. And Jesus is saying it's not about the outside. It's about the inside. How many of y'all know people that say, man, you invite them to church, hey, come, you know, come, come and join us for worship. Well, you know what? I, I, I got to get my life together before I, I, I get back to church. Oh, man, you know what? I... I've heard people say they even have to get a nice outfit. No, you don't. God's not interested about your outfit. He wants to do something inside. It's about what happens inside. We are not born again by our good works. We are born again by what? By Holy Spirit. We're born again by the Spirit. That's the key element there. Holy Spirit's got to be in us and living through us. Listen to Titus chapter 3, verses 5 to 7. Titus 3, verse 5. He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that being justified by his grace, we would be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. There's a key element to be born again. You and I aren't born again unless we have Holy Spirit in us. That's the element there. We've got to have Holy Spirit. There's no being born again unless Holy Spirit lives in us and we have that spiritual birth from above. There's an exception. There's an element. Third and finally, I want you to notice the evidence. The evidence of being born again. In verse 8, Jesus speaks about the evidence of being born again. Listen to what he says in verse 8. Jesus then says, 
The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Holy Spirit can't be controlled, can't be understood, but the proof of his work is apparent. Jesus is saying here there's unmistakable evidence. You can't see the Holy Spirit, but the evidence is there when somebody has Holy Spirit living in them. Both of my parents are originally from Oklahoma. If you know anything about Oklahoma, Kansas, that's known as tor a tornado alley. And growing up, my, my mom said they used to see tornadoes all the time. She told me a story about, I think the house they were in got picked up a little bit by a tornado once and put back down. I've never seen a tornado. But I've seen fields that now grow crops because a tornado once blew through there and knocked all the trees down. I've seen the remnants of a tornado that has come through. I've never seen electricity in my house, but I know that electricity is there. Every single morning when I turn on the light, I know that I've got electricity. I don't see it, but I know it's there. You know, when I open up my refrigerator and it's cold, I know there's electricity working. When I pour my, my cup of coffee first thing in the morning, I've got to have my coffee. It's hot and, and nice and steaming because I've got electricity. In the same way, we can't see Holy Spirit, but we know He's there. And Jesus is saying the evidence, when you see it through somebody, it's clear. If you know the, the name Chuck Colson, Chuck Colson was one of the key uh, participants in the Watergate scandal. He's a very, very hated man. He went to jail. And, and in prison, he got saved. He wrote a book called Born Again. As you can imagine, there was a lot of people that were skeptical. You know, what? this is one of, of Nixon's cronies. But people started watching what happened with Chuck Colson and, the, and what God did through him and the, the prison ministry. That's Holy Spirit. That's the evidence right there. I see the evidence of your goodness. I think about that song that's popular right now. Pastor Robbie Gallaty said there's two factors at work when we're born again. There's the external call and the internal call. The external call and the internal call. The external call is God's word. God's word being heard, being shared. The internal call is Holy Spirit. The gospel is shared and the person responds. Throughout history, there has been this attempt by mankind, humanity, to try to reach God. You've seen it throughout. You study history. There's been this, this, this attempt, mankind trying to reach God through good works, through saying special prayers, maybe giving alms, maybe trying to, to, to live a, a perfect, good, upstanding life, it's not enough. There was a fall. What's a fall? Well, you all know that if you know the story of creation, we had, mankind had perfect fellowship with God from the beginning. But in our rebellion, turning against God, we have fallen away from him, and there's been this gap. Mankind, God, there's no way to get to him. But God reached out to humankind reached out to his son Jesus, he sent his son Jesus, fully God, fully man, to live a perfect life, to share and teach us what God's truth is. And Jesus willingly went on that cross where he suffered and he died on that cross, but he rose again on that third day to offer forgiveness to all that just come and just respond, just reach out and receive him as Lord and Savior. You do that, you're born again. Holy Spirit comes to reside in you. You see, all of the religions are do, 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 Christianity is done, done, done. It's not hard for me. When I hear people say, well, i got people asking, what's the difference between Christianity and all the other religions? That's easy. That's easy. The, the, every single religion is do, 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 reach, reach, reach. Christianity is God reaching out to man, God with us. Take my hand. Turn from your sins. Just trust me as Savior and Lord. And later on in John chapter 3, I don't have time to unpack this. Jesus is going to share an illustration from the Old Testament of a bronze serpent. If you recall that story, when there were, the Israelites were getting bitten by these serpents, by these snakes, they were dying left and right. And so Moses builds this, this bronze serpent, puts it on a pole, and all the Israelites have to do is just turn and look at this pole, and they're instantly healed. And Jesus says, in the same way, the Son of Man, that's me, I'm going to be lifted up on a cross, and people just turn from their sins and turn to me and look to me in faith and call out to me, they'll be saved. You must be born again. Let me ask you a question this morning. Have you been born again? 
Have you been born again? I'm not asking you whether you're a church member. I'm not asking you if you've come down the aisle and you, you signed the card. I'm asking you if you've been baptized. Have you been born again? There should be a place in our lives. It doesn't mean that we become perfect because we're not. We're going to fall short of God's glory. But there should be some place in our lives we can point to and say, you know what? I was lost, but now I'm fine. I was blind, now I see. Billy Graham tells a story. He was invited to a special dinner of an archbishop of a, of a denomination of another country. And as he sat down, he asked the archbishop, how'd you become a Christian? I like to hear how people got, became a Christian. And the archbishop says, well, it's an interesting story. It actually happened over in America, your home country. I was invited to be a, a guest lecturer at one of the finest seminaries in Chicago. And so during the day, I thought I'd tour around and see the sights of Chicago. And I got on a city bus, and I felt a, somebody tap me on the shoulder. And I turned around, and there was a, a woman who was obviously didn't have much money, looked like she was very, very poor. And she said, Mr., have you ever been born again? Well, English is my second language, so I figured maybe I didn't understand her, so I kind of shared with her, well, Madam, you don't understand. I, I'm an archbishop of a, of a dominant religion in another country. I'm coming over here, and I'm, I'm, I'm teaching at this, this, this theological seminary that they talk about God. She goes, Mr., that's not what I asked. I asked if you've ever been born again. And he continued to try to I excuse and, and try to explain. And she says, Mr., have you been born again? And she got off the bus. She went her way, and that question just disturbed that archbishop the rest of the day. So he got back to his hotel room, and he found a Bible, a Gideon Bible, for my Gideons out there, pulled the Gideon Bible out, and he was found that passage, John chapter 3, he knew where it was well. And as he read the passage, he was convicted that even though he had all this religious training, even though he knew all this devotion, this service, this recognition, he had never been born again. And so there in that hotel room, he got on his knees and he cried out to God to forgive him. As he shared with, with Billy Graham that day, he said, it was that moment when I was born again, when I truly became a follower of Jesus Christ. There's nothing you and I can do to get to heaven. As we go on our series of Holy Spirit, We've got to understand, we've got to answer that question, have I been born again? My old pastor said once, the minute you are born, you begin to die. But the minute you're born again, you begin to live. Have you been born again? You're going to have some time to think about that question for a moment. Because we're going to, we've set aside some special time ordination this morning of one of our, our new deacon brothers. And so what I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask Mr. Ken Al to come down and begin our time to introduce our candidate, Chesley. So Ken Al, if you would come on down. And after we are through with our ordination time, we're going to have a time of response. I'm going to come back up here and we'll have a time to respond to God's word this morning. It's a real pleasure for me to be able to introduce our deacon candidate this morning. When I asked Chesley to give me a little information about himself, the very first thing he said was, I love Jesus above all. This certainly tells me that he has his heart in the right place. I have known Chesley for many years, probably dating back to my high school years although he was probably already out by that time. I have gotten to know him much better since he started attending church here. I've known him to be a person of putting others first and wanting to help and serve others. I am thankful that I received support from him during my coaching days as I would look up into the stands and see him at a game. That meant a lot to me. Chesley has one son, John, 
who has four children, if I'm correct. Um, and Barbara has a, da a daughter, her and her husband have two children, six grandchildren for Chesley. I know how much he enjoys his grandchildren, picking them up from school and just spending time with them. He really lights up when he talks about them. Chesley received the Darlington County Fireman of the Year Awards for Station 2 in 1997, another example of serving others. In May of 2015, he retired from SCE&G with 41 years of service. Chesley started attending First Baptist Church in 1988. He joined our church October 18, 2019. He is married to his best friend, Barbara, a Greenway Drive alum on December 29, 2001. Chesley, will you please come forward? Church, I would like to present you our candidate for ordination, Chesley Benjamin. I'd like to ask the church, at this time, I'd like to ask the church to stand, please. And recite after me, I'm going to read, and then after that, you guys read. Uh, <clears throat> in the presence of God, we solemnly recognize the importance of the office of deacon. The deacon is to assist in responding to need. To minister in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. To Chesley, you have been entrusted with a sacred task. Do you now accept the calling of caring for pe God's people in the community of believers? To the congregation, in placing this mantle, in placing this mantle of responsibility upon these servants, you must commit to supporting them in their ministry. Do you accept this charge? Recognizing that we are one body in the Christ and having promised mutual support before holy God, let us serve on one another. You may be seated. Chesley, do you trust that you are truly called by God to the ministry of a deacon in this church? Will you commit to ministering to those in need, to explaining salvation in Jesus, and to calling forth greater discipleship to Christ? Will you seek to provide an upright example by your total life, your words, your attitude, your behavior, and your family life that will point others to Christ? Will you commit to upholding the fellowship of Christ's church at First Baptist Church of Darlington, doing all you can to support, affirm, and undergird its ministry through your presence, your possessions, and your witness? Congregation, this is the person you have elected. You have heard his declaration of his readiness to serve in the office of deacon. I ask you, the church, to declare your affirmation.
Let us pray. Lord God, you are the Father of heaven and earth. All things consist by you and exist by you. And you have made a plan through Jesus for us to communicate with you through your Holy Spirit. Ever since the time of the apostles, servants have been appointed as deacons to continue to help build up your church. And even today, that continuing of service of the Holy Spirit is brought forward to your church. Even in this church, the First Baptist Church, there are deacons here who have been called and who are serving you with the best of their ability. We have here one Chesley, a man of God, filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who is willing to serve in a marvelous way. And yet we cannot remember or fail to remember the cross of Christ. We oftentimes talk about the cross of Christ, but there is the towel of Christ who humbled himself and bent low and washed the disciples' feet with his own towel. Lord, we know what it means to serve because we saw Jesus the one who is the servant master. And no one is greater than their master. And so as he came to serve, he has called us to follow that example in our service one to another. And especially now with Chelsea coming before us, give him courage and strength and the ability to follow in your steps and be led in the direction you would have him go as he assists in the work of this church and relates to those who are in his charge. Thank you so much for the love of Jesus and for the power of Almighty God's Holy Spirit. In his precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. For our ordination time, Robert, I'm going to ask you to come up. Chester, would you come here? I'm going to have you sit in the seat of honor here. I'm going to ask Barbara to stand. And all of my ordained uh, deacons, ministers in the past, if you all would come and line up along the piano side, along the wall, and we have a special time, come on, all my, I have ordained, there you go, my ordained deacons, my ministers, y'all line up along the, the side here, and what we're going to do is we're going to, in an orderly fashion, I'm going to invite you to come by and say just a little special prayer over Chesley and Barbara, as God lays on your heart, and when it's finished, I'm going to be at the very end, and when we're through, we'll have a special presentation, but we're going to begin our, just our special ordination time of prayer over this dear man.
like to present to Chesley on behalf of the church body. First and foremost, we do have a certificate of ordination that we always put together. They're very special, important um, ordination that this is, a recognition. And also it's a special gift from us as a church. There's always a book that I love to give each of our, our new deacons ordainings about being a deacon and being a servant model for the church. So I present that to you, my brother. And now First Baptist Church of Darlington, as your chairman of deacons, I present to you our new deacon, Chesley Benjamin. Before we close, I want you to think about that question I asked you a moment ago. Have you been born again? And maybe this morning, maybe the Holy Spirit's speaking to you right now, recognizing, you know what, I've I got baptized, I came, I, maybe I'm a church member, but I've never truly been born again. And maybe he's convicting you and calling you. So I wanted to have a, a special time of invitation, of response this morning. I'm going to say a little prayer for us. Maybe there's someone on your heart this morning. Maybe you've got somebody that you know in your family or friends, and you're just burdened. You're just like, Lord, they're not born again. And maybe you just feel led to come at this altar and just cry out to God and just lay them on this altar. I'm going to do that. I've got some, some people in my heart this morning. Or maybe there's nothing else God's laying on your heart this morning. Maybe a decision to come and unite with our church body and membership. Maybe for a special prayer. But we always like to have a time of response. As you have heard God's word, as you've seen his work in one of his faithful servants this morning, I want you to pray with me. And at the close of my prayer, we'll have a time of response invitation I extend to you as this church body this morning. Would you pray with me? Father, what an awesome, wonderful day it's been because you're so awesome and wonderful. And Father, as we have heard your word clearly shared this morning, that unless we are born again, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. We cannot see the kingdom of God. Father, it burdens my heart so often. I, I hear of, of Christians, and they just don't get it. They don't see the kingdom of God because they've never truly been born again. So I pray this day that you would touch hearts, open up eyes, transform minds. And you save the souls that need be saved this moment would you draw unto yourself those burdened for a lost loved one friend somebody who they know needs jesus maybe lord there's something else in our hearts you're just drawing us unto yourself i pray that you would speak to us where we are this morning and may we come just as we are to you where we pray this nasty all these things in jesus christ would you please stand as we have a time of invitation would you come as holy spirit calls you this morning all to Jesus I surrender, all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus I surrender, make me Savior, holy thine, may thy Holy Spirit fill Savior, I surrender all. Amen. We're going to have a word of prayer, uh, and then we'll be dismissed this morning. If the Lord's working in your hearts and your minds, come and see me, because some of his best work I've ever seen has been after an invitation time. Uh, children, parents, families of children, please stay for the picnic. Great time. 
pray for our youth tonight. One night over at Ebenezer. Pray, 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 please for us. We've got a group going over there this evening. Uh, we leave here at, at 4 o'clock. So join me in a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed this morning. Father, I thank you so much. You have just moved in a mighty way. I thank you for every single person, heart, soul. I just pray as we go out this morning, as you deal with us, wherever we might be with you, would you please speak in a mighty way. Draw us unto yourself through your word, through others in that time. And Lord, we just want to give you the glory and thanks and praise for what we have, the freedom we have in Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray and thank you. Today, it all begins. I'm seeing my life for the very first time through a different lens. Yesterday, I didn't understand.